Alrighty folks, I want to welcome you back to another video from Yates Computers Tips and Reviews. For this one, I wanted to go back over a subject I went over maybe two years ago. And I called it the secrets of Dell Optiplex 3050. Ran into a problem with that system when we were upgrading. <coughs> kind of an interesting issue. I've had it once or twice before. Not to this severity. I've had a lot of people tell me from the video that has a lot of views so far on the site. Seems like a lot of people are interested in this 3050. It has an M.2 slot on the board. It had the old spinning mechanical drive in it. It was very, very slow because of the mechanical drive. Due to it having the M.2 that was the third gen speeds, <coughs> I believe it might have been third or second gen, it would take the current M.2 NVMe card. So we got a nice, good, gaming, solid state NVMe card. Made a world of difference. We didn't change anything else other than that. We didn't change the memory. We didn't upgrade memory. We didn't do anything else to it. Didn't change any memory clocks, anything else. <coughs> have videos about how to read your memory stick. Those are very, very, very important to understand what your memory is clocked at and what speeds to make sure all of that matches. Well, of course, everybody knows what the inside of a drive looks like with the platters. It can only do one function at a time. It seeks, finds your data. This is an inside of a drive. Not much different than standard drives. Platters are different. I have a video of when I took it apart, a different one, where it has two platters. This one has just the one platter. So, there's a difference in speeds, writes, how many functions it can do at one time. Wanted to touch base on that a little. Of course, you have to go into the BIOS. I can't tell really if you can see it or not, but I have it up on this computer here. And you have to change some settings. <coughs> you have to tell it to boot to the M.2 drive. Problem I was having is when I put in the drive and unhooked <coughs> The other one and went in and actually changed the physical settings the computer did not recognize the change it did not recognize the m.2 nvme drive in the computer at all it recognized hey that drive's missing like hey what happened even though i changed these settings it didn't do any good it basically ignored what i did so what I had to do was pull out the battery on the motherboard. Should have a motherboard over here. I actually had to remove the battery, restart the system, let it recognize that the new hard drive was attached to the motherboard. Going to the BIOS, I had pictures of it from my phone and everything. It would change the settings to what I had it set to. <clears throat> and it would recognize that that drive was there. I had to clone all the information over to the drive. And when I go to switch back to the solid state drive, or not solid state, the old spinning mechanical drive, that was SATA, cable it wouldn't recognize 
the SATA, even though I changed those settings all exactly back to what it was before. So again, I pulled out the battery, let it boot up, found the drive, booted up to the OS, did everything it needed to. Had to do that a few times to make sure I got everything transferred over, had everything right, everything good. <clears throat> but what I did is when I put the solid state drive on here on the board for the computer, I put that drive on an external connection, an external cable that plugged into the USB and I was able to mirror it all over, transfer it all over, copy it all over from that drive to the solid state. So it was kind of an interesting little factor that was there. So that was one of the secrets of that changeover to know how to do that. Did a video on this before, wanted to go through because it was before I had the official shirts and everything else and was just wearing my standard street shirt Plus, there's been a little bit more information that I wanted to share. The 3050 has the issue of my 2022 year-end video. It has the same issue. I had to remedy that problem on that computer also. Go back and watch that video. I will be doing another video on that because a lot of people aren't paying attention to that video. And I know I have 30 plus computers that I've had to remedy that on. And at least one of them was a server. So there is a problem. I found a lot of it has to do with your power setting savings when you go high performance maximum performance all of those type of things somewhere in those settings I believe is what is causing that main issue where it's at I'm not a hundred percent sure but I do notice that with some of these computers they will say I'm on maximum performance power settings you go into the system to try to figure out what the system says the maximum performance of those systems are there are bits and pieces missing something to do with how they image that drive and release it even though i can't prove that i know that's not 100 percent true because I've had that happen on computers that were clean installs. So where it's pulling the powers, it, I'm assuming, is actually from the motherboard itself, somewhere in this BIOS, that in the power setting somewhere, that it's talking to the OS, something's getting dropped or lost. So I found it kind of interesting so I wanted to go through this because I've sent out the link that I have to other YouTubers out there and I got no response from them saying, hey, I need you to investigate this more because this is kind of above what equipment I have. I don't have a test bench. I don't have a huge bunker building to test stuff. You know, there's a lot of other people out there that do hardcore testing. To find out, <clears throat> is it the motherboard? Is it the BIOS? Is it the OS? Is it just because now we have solid state drives <clears throat> that this problem is getting bigger? And I know that's not one of them. Because I mentioned in the video, there are five systems that were came in the same had spinning mechanical drives i've talked about it in the video about how two of them were really really bad one of them was way up like 180 <clears throat> percent had a spinning mechanical drive 
<clears throat> and again, why I'm bringing this up in this video? Because it applied to this computer. It applied to this 3050. I found it in there. It was not a high. It was over 100%. It was 120 some percent. But it wasn't like the other ones. But again, 120% is still high. I saw it peak at like 120, 118, somewhere in that range. And I went, oh, wait a minute. Let me fix this. Funny thing is, we were having some little issues with that machine. All those little issues went away. So, the tricky part is, is a lot of those issues that I've seen that kind of rear their heads up with this issue are kind of the same issues that would lead me to think it's a memory issue. But it's not. It's actually a CPU issue, a CPU bus issue, somewhere in that range. How to fix it? I have the video. I'll be doing an updated video again on that, on how to fix that problem. But I wanted to go through because, again, this is about the 3050. I have over 2,000 views on that video of people wanting to see what's going on with that 30 video, 3050. Again, it's a good computer. It had a good M.2 drive slot in it. Only problem I didn't like is they didn't provide you the screw. It had the mounting bracket, but it did not have the screw. So you had to go out and source the screw to put on there. Again, that's not very hard. I got screws and stuff everywhere. So that's not hard to find to get a screw. You go to a store, you can order it online, you can do whatever you need to. But that's a great upgrade to an older machine. Some machines that I found that had an M.2 NVMe slot was a Gen 1. They just used a cheap one on there. They didn't really market it and advertise it. It was on there, but when they see it. So, again, do your homework and make sure if you see that slot on that board that it is actually what it's supposed to be or what not what it's supposed to be, what you think it should be. You want to make sure. So this is just a short little follow-up to the original that I wanted to summarize that because it is a very good computer. Unfortunately, it ain't going to be around for much longer. With Windows 11 hardware support, being so high, that system is going to have to go. It was an Intel i7, not a high enough generation to move up. And again, I have a video that's posted with gloom and gloom and everything else, Windows 12. What is Windows 12 going to bring to the ballpark? It's supposed to be 2024, probably towards the end. Bringing in artificial intelligence, all of that type of stuff, supposedly. That's the new step of the OS. So they have the new version coming out. Heard a lot of rumors, hear a lot of things out there. And like I mentioned on the other video, until I actually have the physical final release software, do I actually care? Just like Windows 11, I came out with the developer's edition and the other preview editions that had all this good stuff that everybody was happy about. When the final edition came out, didn't have it. Go back, do your research, do your studies, do all of that type of stuff. You'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. And again, the 3050, there's some little quirks. 
a lot of people have said I haven't had that problem mine has worked fine BIOS has been updated everything else was good so I wanted to just do another video on this so everybody's aware because pretty soon I'm sure that system will be gone bye bye or it may end up being a Linux machine or something else other than a Windows operating system computer wanted to throw that out there just because Windows does not support that system anymore does not necessarily mean that system's no good and can't be used that system can be used for other operating systems just wanted to put it out there because that will apply especially especially if you have an i7 in it I don't believe that one had an i9 you might have an i9 in it i5 should be more than enough enough memory an m.2 that system is not trash not to mention you can add SATA drives as big as these drives are nowadays I don't really see a, a reason why that system really has to be disposed of unless you're in an environment only running Windows so I want to thank everybody for watching this was my secrets to the 3050 video I know there was one already done a few years ago but this is the more current with the current issues that I've seen on it not too many issues with it it's a really good system so thank you all for watching another video from H computers tips and reviews thank you